Hello and welcome to Moving Pictures Kenya. My name is Bonventure and today I'm in Nairobi and I want to take you all the way to Komarok Estate on the outskirts of Nairobi. Here we will meet a very special woman. Mama Alice Onyino has taken on cancer head on. She shares with us her journey as a cancer patient. She tells us about the pain, the triumph and the human resilience. My cancer journey is funny. In the year 202, one time in my house, just from the bathroom, as I was preparing myself in my bedroom, dressing up, I felt a small thing in my breast. I used to do self-examination. Mm -hmm. So I felt a very tiny thing. Then I got concerned. So I, it was, I went to work. I told my colleagues. They looked for it. Nobody could feel it. I also looked for it, I could not feel anything. So then it was like, ah, maybe I was just dreaming. But I kept on, every now and then I kept on feeling, feeling. Then you could feel that small thing, then it gets lost. You feel it, get lost. Later, I went to Adzari to go and see the doctor. So the doctor examined me, he felt it. So he decided that we do uh, an examination, which was fine need aspiration. It was a small cloth, very tiny anyway. He was even saying, I don't think it is anything bad. Mm -hmm. Yes, so we did a, a test, which is uh, fine needle aspiration. It's a specimen taken, fluids taken from the swelling. So it went for testing. When it went, results came, said it is non-malignant. So I was okay. I ignored and uh, continued with life. But I continued with the life, but still my hand every time could, could go there to, to examine, to examine. So this growth kept on growing, it was increasing in size slowly. In 2005, I came, to, I went to see the doctor, and then the doctor examined me, felt the growth. He took again a fine needle aspiration, and he ordered for a mammogram, which was done. And the results came that there's nothing. So I told the doctor, because of my profession, and at that time, I used to work in the antenatal clinic. I was dealing with ladies, mm -hmm. and I was teaching them how to examine their breasts. I was examining. So every time I could feel like touching my breast, so I told the doctor, even if it is not anything, I want this thing removed. Mm -hmm. So the doctor arranged, and he removed that, the growth. When the growth was removed, he took it for histology. He took it to the laboratory. Still, results came that it was non-malignant. Mm -hmm. So that was 2005. We relaxed and I was okay until 2010. 2010, again, just in my house. So in the bathroom, when I was just bathing, I felt a growth in my armpit. Mm -hmm. and, hey, what is this? But I relaxed. Then I went, I told the doctor. The doctor touched it, he examined it, and told me, well, let, let's observe it first. So we observed it for a few months and uh, I went, they did again a fine needle aspiration. I don't know whether this needle was taking the right fluids or not, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But they did a fine needle aspiration and they said no malignant. Mm -hmm. But I told the doctor, then remove it. Mm -hmm. So the doctor said, we arranged with the doctor that just that removal of that thing I cannot be admitted. Mm -hmm. This is to 20, 2010. 2010. Mm -hmm. I told the doctor, you cannot admit me for this. So we organized that I go to the hospital in the morning at around by 8 I would be in theater. So I went very early, by 7.30 I was in the hospital. Mm -hmm. When I got there, then they had to conduct my insurance. We had a group insurance, Yakazi. Mm -hmm. So they had to conduct my insurance to give an okay for me to be admitted. Mm -hmm. We took the whole day. I was in the hospital from 7.30 to 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. The insurance had not responded. Mm -hmm. So when it go to 6 p.m., I cannot be taken to theater because they have not responded to say yes, they'll pay, they'll, to admit that they'll pay the bill. They, I was told, we, we are still conducting your insurance. You go, the moment they respond, then we will call you. Mm -hmm. I went to work. It took two weeks. These people have not responded. So I took myself to the, their offices. So when I went to their offices to ask them what is happening, so when I went, uh, I tried the Kuba Sura Yakazi, I told them, you want, you, you want me to die? Mm -hmm. Then they were like, why? I said, I want to be treated and you don't want to release money. 
So I explained then, then they told me, no, you, they explained whatever happened. And they said, I can now go. They asked me, where do you want to be admitted? I said, the hospital. And uh, they were kind that time. I think they felt they had made a mistake or so, I don't know. Mm -hmm. They gave me a car. Yeah. So they a car me. or an ambulance? A car too. The, their own car. I, mm. I went into their car because I was not... Uh, just their own car. They were going around the hospitals to visit their patients. Okay. That's what the insurance do. Yeah. To confirm whether you are the real person or not. Yeah. yeah, so it was their time to go around. So they said we can give you a lift. Mm. So they took me to the hospital and uh, when I went, I reached there. Good enough, I found the surgeon. Mm. So the surgeon, I went and I talked to the surgeon. And uh, I became a bit naughty. I didn't tell this surgeon anything that I had done. He asked me, have you done a mammogram? I said, no. Have you done anything else? No. The, okay, the, the, the scar on my breast, when they removed the, the whatever, the growth, mm -hmm. it healed until there was totally nothing. Mm -hmm. So there was no scar. Mm -hmm. So I said, I've not done anything. Then there he was, he was asking me, then why do you want this thing just removed? I said, but it is bothering me. So he said, no, we cannot remove it. Let's do some tests before. Mm -hmm. So then he said, I have to go for a... In fact, he himself said, I find needle aspiration. Mm -hmm. And then I do a mammogram. Mm -hmm. So I prepared. Then I went back to the hospital. They took me with an ambulance. They did a mammogram. Mm -hmm. Then I went to the room for a fine needle aspiration. So when I went in that room, the doctor who came to do the fine needle aspiration did a... Uh, what? I've forgotten the name of that thing. Mm. Uh, so we looked at it the, through the x-ray. What is it? Mm. In a mm. uh, I did that, then he told me, uh, have you ever done a mammogram? Mm. I said, yes. I said, what were the results? He said, I just, the, the, today, this morning, I've not gotten the results. It's here. So he left me on the coach mm. and he went to look at the results. Mm -hmm. So then he came from there and he told me, being a private hospital, you know the way they handled you. Mm -hmm. He requested me if I could allow him mm -hmm. to do uh, an open biopsy, mm -hmm. that uh, I will not benefit from a fine needle aspiration. Mm -hmm. So I said, I don't mind. So he did the biopsy, open, took the knee. So biopsy is where they take a they, tissue? They biopsy, yeah, they operate, they cut there, take a tissue from the swelling mm. to take to the laboratory for histology. Mm. So he took that specimen, that one, the results cannot be ready the same day. Mm. So after that, then, you know, I had been taken to the hospital with a nurse. Mm. Then the nurse was given my results. Mm. And it is professionally, you don't allow the patient to look at the results. Yeah. So this nurse was really carrying that envelope. So I told her I want to look at it. Mm -hmm. She was a bit rigid. Then I told her, anyway, I'm also a professional on the same line. Let me just see what it is. Mm -hmm. So when I read, then there it was. That this is, it, it is malignant, there is a malignant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I missed a bit. Mm -hmm. I just felt, wow. And the first thing that came into me, and this is the thing that was going to kill me, Mm -hmm. I looked, because I've been nursing patients, mm -hmm. so I saw myself in the first stage of, the, of cancer, because mm -hmm. I was, I just imagined from 2002, mm -hmm. and this is 2010. Mm -hmm. So then he see it has eaten the whole body. Mm -hmm. So I knew that uh, that is the end of me. Mm -hmm. And being a mother, I started just thinking of my children. Mm -hmm. What will happen to them? Mm -hmm. They're still in school. What am I going to do? Mm -hmm. So. I, it, it was hard, it was a bitter pay, pill to, to swallow, mm -hmm. but we uh, went back to the doctor. When I go to the doctor, he looked at the results, then I told him, I want you to take me to theater now, now, mm -hmm. now. Then he asked me why. I said, I just want this thing removed, I just want this breast removed, and I want you to remove both of them. Mm -hmm. But he was a very good surgeon, calm, he talked to me. He saw the state I was in, mm -hmm. so he talked to me, he told me he wants to do some tests. Mm -hmm. We cannot just look at it and say it is malignant, so we are going to remove. Mm -hmm. We have to do some tests to see how far it has gone, if it has, so that we know what we are handling. Mm -hmm. So he called a counselor, the counselor came, talked to me, and I thought, yeah, then they arranged. 
I went back for some test, blood test. Then I did a bone scan and he looked at the results. So far, it had not traveled. Mm -hmm. So it was still localized at the breast. Then he told me he's going to prepare me to theater. Mm -hmm. I asked him to remove both of my breasts. Asked me why? I gave him a reason. My reason was, if this one is affected, then even the other one will be affected. Mm -hmm. But he said, no, it, it is not necessary. Mm -hmm. Then I said, but for cosmetic purposes, he told me there's something you will put on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, then I prepared, I went, I was operated off. This was now 2011, February. Mm. That's now when all the tests had been done, everything. Then I went to theater in 2011, 2011, February, I think it was February 10th or so. So they did mastectomy. Mm. I was in a hospital for three days, discharged me home. I was so downhearted. Mm. All I was doing was crying in my house here. Mm. But then, I don't know whether it was God talking to me or what. One day in the house, I left the hospital when I was still having the gadgets, the drainage and what. Mm. I, why did I leave the hospital early? It's because of the bill. Mm. Just the investigations that are done, mm. plus the operation, already my, my slaughter, the insurance was finished. Mm. Yeah. And here I am, I've not even started the treatment yet. Mm. So I came home. And one time in my room, I don't know whether, during the day too, I slept. And maybe it was a dream or maybe it was God talking to me, I don't know. Mm. But I had something, somebody called me by my name, then asked me in English, mm. that Alice, if you'd be told that this is not for you, give it to somebody else, who would you give to? And mm. what criteria would you use? Mm. And I woke up. Mm. But believe me, Boni, mm. from that time, Mm. That fear, that question of why, why me, mm. what will happen or what, just went. Mm. I accepted, mm. and I think by accepting, it helped me to recover. Mm. Yeah, mm. I accepted, and my wound recovered so well, mm. and then uh, I had now to start on chemotherapy. Mm. You know, you're talking about removing the, the breast as if it's a small thing. To me, that is a, a chilling experience. Yeah, it worked. Now it's part, some of these things part of our bodies. If those that we cannot do without, mm. or what you can, that was the only treatment. There mm. was no way they were going to leave it there. Mm. Mm. So they removed it. Mm. So far from 2011, I've remained with one. Mm. The other one went. Mm. It was so hard for me, but I had church people. Mm. They were here with me most of the time. Every time there was somebody from the church, and above all, my family. Mm. The moment they heard what I was going, what, what had happened, they really stood up with me. Mm. So that is those are the people, either, uh, those two groups, they really worked with me in the journey. Mm. So I started on chemo the first time I did, just before I did the chemo, the wound is healing. I was given time for the wound to heal. Mm. So the wound healed. Yeah. Now I was preparing for chemo. Then another big bang came. I developed an abscess mm -hmm. and a big one by the same site, just mm -hmm. at the wound. That one also just put me down, 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 because I was like, now, if this is an abscess here, then it means ikitu, ikuhapo, ikutokayote. Mm -hmm. It was a very bad abscess mm -hmm. that uh, the doctor had to take me again in theater for incision and drainage. Mm -hmm. So we went to theater, they operated, they drained the pus, they removed the dead tissue, and then uh, they took the specimen to the laboratory. But when the results came, it was just normal infection. Mm. Cancer cells were not there. Mm. And uh, it was an infection which looked very bad, but the bacteria that caused the infection, I think it knew my pocket. So it mm. responded to very cheap drugs. Yeah. yeah. So I was treated with very, very cheap drugs and it healed completely. Mm. Cancer is a very expensive disease. Its medication drains off of families of all their savings. So after healing, then now I started the journey of chemo. I did chemotherapy, eight sessions. Wow. Eight sessions. And each session was costing me 50,000. Wow. 
and uh, so I did the eight after that then I had to rest for about a month according to the doctor then I went for radio radiotherapy I did radio for 30 sessions every day Monday to Friday on a nichoma for five minutes seven to seven minutes and every time I was going and I was now paying for my pocket because yeah. So every time I was going, I'm carrying 5,000 shillings. So every time on Ayenda, 5,000 shillings. Mm -hmm. Monday to Thursday, 5,000, 5,000. Friday, I carry 10,000. Why? The session for radio, 5,000. Then the consultation fee, because the doctor has to see me, oncology must see me mm -hmm. that day to see how I'm progressing. Mm -hmm. And I did the 30 sessions, then they were over. Then I was put on oral drugs, which were called, they were, they, I was told they were hormonal drugs. So I took them, I was taking them, but then I kept on visiting, going for clinic monthly, mm. man, every month. And every time I go, there are blood tests because cancer is cancer. Mm. It is not anything that you would see it out here. Mm. It's something in the blood. Mm. So they must do some tests mm. to know how it is. Mm. So they did those tests, then I started going the, uh, every three months, every six months. Then now they told me I can, now I was going yearly. Mm. I was okay. And I remained on the drugs, visiting the doctor. Every time they do the testing, I'm okay. Every time they do the test, I'm okay. Until 2022. Mm, that's two years, about two years ago. Yes. 2022, January. I just started having some pain in the chest. You could just feel like your chest, somebody's pressing it together. Mm. Not really pain, but that feeling. You just mm. feel like you're being pressed. Then you know, it relaxes, pressed then. So I came. I, I, I talk of coming because, you know, I relocated to up country. Mm. Mm. So 2022, then I came, So my doctor. He examined me, then he told me I go and do a pet scan. Mm. Which I went, I booked the PET scan. At then, at that time, PET scan in Kenya was only in one place. Mm. And that being private, it must have been very expensive. It was 78,000. Ah. But you book because people from, it was the only one in East Africa, I think, because we were having patients from Tanzania, from Uganda. Mm. So I booked this thing in May, and I was, uh, my time for examination was in August. Ah. Mm. So they did a PET scan. When they did that PET scan, the results came out that uh, my ribs on the left side, my third, fourth, and fifth rib, mm -hmm. the cells are there. Wow. So then now, back to square one. I went back to my doctor, took the results, he looked at it, the whole body, according to the results at that time. Mm -hmm. I was okay apart from, that is where the cells were seen. Mm -hmm. Then so I went, then we did some blood tests, what, everything was okay. So he decided that because it is on the bone, mm -hmm. he's not going to give me ke chemotherapy. chemotherapy yeah. Instead, he had to radio. Mm -hmm. So we did the radio. Five sessions. Mm -hmm. After five sessions, that feeling went. Mm -hmm. I was back to normal. Mm -hmm. And I continued. I come, see the doctor, I'm okay. So it went on like that until 2024. Mm. 2023 December, mm. and I started having some chest pain on the same side. Pain, it started slowly. There's a pain, you can feel the pain, take some painkillers. It goes, and I would stay, get the pain. So when December was over, January, I came to see the doctor. When I came, you saw me, you examined me, he ordered another PET scan. He said, we can't know, we want to know what is happening in there. Mm. So I went for a PET scan, which they did. And now, PET scans are in Kenya. But when the results of PET scan came, they were not pleasing. Mm. Mm. They were not good because the same, same ribs, mm. which were which were affected the other time. Mm. They were still the same ones affected, but this time the scan showed that the, the ribs have really been eaten up. Mm. So they're just fragile. Mm. Mm. And then along my spinal cord, Kualamba 2, 2 and 3, 
before mm. Mm. the cells were seen. Then they were also seen on a hepatic vein, vein, the vein that leads to the liver. Mm. 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 So, it, 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 it hit me back again. Mm. But I thank God mm. that uh, it went, uh, I, 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 I swallowed it. Mm. I accepted. Mm. Because I've already accepted this condition, it's a disease that anybody can get, mm. just the way people get malaria. So it is not anything that it is a punishment to me or whatever. Yeah. So I, I, came, I started treatment. Mm. I went out, I was having very bad pain, bad, bad pains. Mm. I was given very strong painkillers, which were costed 13,000. Oh. That is what I use. Mm. And then I started on radio. Mm. So they start with the radio to calm down the pain fast. So radio, I did 10 sessions. But when I just did the first three, the pain went. Mm. But then I developed a complication. And I was told that this is, I think the race is that when they were burning the, the back and whatever, mm. it affected my intestines mm. and my gut. Mm. Mm. So I had to, I could not swallow. Mm. Uh, could not swallow the, uh, the abdomen, yes, you feel it is swollen, mm. you cannot breathe. Mm. So I told the doctor, doctor explained to me, encouraged me, and told me just continue the treatment, it will be over. Cancer is a very complicated disease. It requires a very strong family support. Mama Alice shares her experiences with her family. Wow! Hey, today daddy came and mommy came. So you greet me. You don't want to greet me. Hi. Greet me. How are you? Did daddy do give me Fit. Thank you. I'm to interview. Hey, Karibu. to you. Oh. Say hi to me. Hello. Who's that, Skyla? Today, I know why is this sweating. I'm a chess. Oh, you want to see? Yeah. Have you seen? Yeah. I can press and then I can see. Where do you want to press it? <laughs> the, the back, the ribs, and the liver. So I started on the radio to relieve my pain. And mm. it's then. So this radio affected my intestines mm. and my gut. Mm. So I could not swallow. Mm. That one also, before I got proper explanation, mm. it took me down. Mm. Because I was like, hey, I spent all this much money using it, I'm doing a PET scan. Mm. If I cannot swallow, does it mean that this thing is already in the throat? Mm. Mm. I couldn't swallow, it was a lot of pain. Mm. So, the doctor sat me down and he explained, but he told me, he assured me, but he told me, it is a stubborn condition. Mm. It will heal, mm. but slowly. Mm. So you'll have to bear it. It happens. It's unfortunate it has happened, but you'll have to bear with it. Mm. pain. I couldn't get to relieve those pains mm. because I was on very strong drugs for pain. But here, you mm. just feel the abdomen is swollen. But if you feel it, it is soft. Mm. But it's swollen. You cannot breathe. If you put anything, you struggle and swallow anything. Mm. So you cannot breathe. You become dysmic and whatever. But I finished the 10 sessions of radio. That was from January this year mm. to, I think, around uh, March. Mm. No, it March. Not March. I, then I rested April. Mm. Then I started chemo. Chemo, I did 12 sessions. Oh. And every session now, I was using a different drug from what I used before. Mm. So every session, every month, I was going twice. Mm. So this week, I go on, it was every time. So I go this week, Thursday, I part with 60,000. Next week, Thursday, 60,000. Wow. That is for, for, for the okay. chemo. Mm -hmm. But before I do the chemo, I have to do a blood test. Mm -hmm. The blood test that the doctor is asking for costs 7,000. Wow. So this is 67,000 this week, mm -hmm. 67,000 next week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he has to look at that blood, how, it, how the drug is behaving with me in the blood. 
then now then now the well, my white cell count also dropped mm. so it meant because it is dropping mm. i should stop chemo mm. and wait for the blood for the for the, the white cell and wait for the white count, count to increase and it increases and it's off mm. so your dawa kwa mwili it gets finished then it starts coming up so doctor decided to put me on a, a already prepared white cell so that i continue with my drug that one is a small drug it's a, a, it's already prepared in a syringe mm. one mil mm. 4000 shillings wow. it is given subcutaneously then now you continue mm. with your name so that is what he was giving me and i was continue i continued and I, i finished i think i finished my chemo in july this year mm. Mm. july this year and then not july june mm. when he said i rest eh? No, July. So after after the IV chemo, mm. then said he's going to put me on a oral chemo. Mm. This oral chemo, I started it in August, and it is uh, I have to take 21 capsules mm. daily, daily, daily for 21 days, then rest for seven days. Mm. These seven days I'm resting. I have to do a blood test. Mm. These 21 capsules. The cost is 52,000. The 21 capsules. Then there is another one with 28 tablets. Mm. They go together. This one of 28 tablets the cost is 4,000. Mm. So this is a 52 plus 4,000 which comes to 56. Mm. So the logistic of uh, the hospital mm. another thousand. So it means I have to part with 57,000. Every, every every month every month in monthly because mm. in 21 days mm. then i rest for 7 days this 7 days i rest then i start again so easy 21 days is mm. i part with it 57000 57. not only that i have to do a blood test i it cannot that's why even i'm sitting in nairobi mm. i would be at up country just taking mm. there just but you know take for 21 days do a blood test go and see the doctor mm. so doctor looks at it then like this time when i did the blood test in uh, september the white cell had dropped mm. to uh, below to it was 1.8 mm. and that was not very good that guy was telling me hey where we are heading mm. it means we can even admit you what? for what for nothing for mm. isolation mm. because of the infection here yeah, and then you can pick infection very easily mm. but i said i will try and isolate myself at home Mm. So he even told me don't let even you he was asking how I live at whatever I tried to explain so I've been in the room it is my room and my room alone mm. but he gave me your your white cell which is already prepared it's called mutant mm. so it's given then he gave me the drug mm. which I'm taking the last capsule I'll take on on uh, on Sunday mm. then the whole of next week is that week of rest Mm. and I go for the blood test that blood test is 7000 shillings oh. mm. so it is 57 mm. plus 7000 mm. that is the money i use every month mm. to get the treatment and getting this money it has not been easy it is mm. a struggle but i thank god for my family they have just been there for me mm. they struggle to get people are just working for me they are looking for money here and there just to send to me mm. and then my friends also are uh, at least helping me mm. so far so it is it is hard but that is where i am yeah because you talked about uh, the breast being removed uh, i think the people who are saying that uh, breast cancer is easier to manage because once they remove the breast then you're okay i think all cancers especially cancers that affect the place that can be operated mm. if discovered early because this thing starts at a place mm. so if discovered early it is manageable mm. yeah so like if it was the mine was discovered when it was already stage 2b oh, okay. and uh, when they operated to remove the breast they removed with the uh, lymph nodes mm. they removed the eight lymph nodes from moko mm. and the, out of those the eight lymph nodes five of them were already affected with corona cells mm. so which means this thing was already traveling yeah. Mm. Yeah, okay. so 
it is it 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 depends on what time it is discovered because you would hear some people say i was uh, was diagnosed breast cancer but my breast was saved mm. so maybe it was discovered very tiny it is still there so they only moved the place that mm. was affected mm. yeah so mine i think it came either it came answer could safari or these cells are different cells i don't know but when i tried to ask the doctor all through we've been doing the test and they say we are okay it is not uh, it is not there are no cells there are no cells how comes this one has come up Mm. Then he told me two things. He said it could be just new cells, mm. or it could be just a tiny, tiny one escaped the radio, escaped the chemo. Mm. So the one that remained is the one that has multiplied. Okay. Yeah, that okay. was an explanation from my doctor. Okay. I don't know because I was so I was pissed. I was like, then why have I been spending money doing these tests? Mm. And yet every time I do the test you look at them and you say they are okay there are no cells look at this like this look at this how comes then it has just come mm. Mm. and maybe being a nurse how has it uh, helped you in managing the the disease is it any different from anybody who doesn't have medical experience yes i don't know one being a nurse it have it affected me so much because of you know you think of the worst yeah. because you you have nursed this patient through and you see mm. so you start imagining if they are talking of it is this mm. so what will be next remember i said i discovered the swelling in toto mm. and this was 2010 mm. that is about 8 years yeah. they are now discovering that it is cancerous mm. so to me that time i just felt there's nothing i saw i saw death because i just saw fourth stage of cancer mm. and that one i am just dying i was not thinking that i'll be alive up to now mm. so it affected me to that extent mm. but once i was cancelled and i talked and we knew whatever i calmed down and accepted i knew since they have diagnosed that it is cancer and it is stage 2b mm. if i've been nursing patients with stage 3 and they recover and go home so who am i so it helped me that way and i knew it is a disease mm. now if you are not a medical person it also affects you differently mm. people tend to think of being bewitched yeah. somebody has bewitched me which disease is this how comes it is me and it is not in my family mm. so people start thinking having different eh, ideas thinking that maybe mtu amemroga Mm. Uh, it, is, it is not a really the condition. Mm. Yeah. According to Mama Alice, there are many misconceptions about the disease. Many people even associate it with witchcraft. Here she shares a moment where people associated her disease with witchcraft. Personally, <laughs> if I say my story you would laugh. When I I I got sick and my mother in law heard that I'm sick. She concluded that somebody at home and she really picked on that person and that person had bewitched me. Why did she think of that person? Because they we were home mm. on holiday. Mm. And then the son to that mama came home drunk mm. and started abusing, you know, just quarreling and abusing people, you know, mm. alcohol. Mm. And saying we are we are tunaringa because mm. you live in Nairobi is a family person. Mm. It's a member of our family. Back in the mm. And he, he was talking of tunaringa. Lakini amjui mama yangu wako na majini. So mtaona. Eh? Mtaona in fact he was telling my husband, "Oh, you will be in Luanda picking papers." Mm. Eh? You talk of majini you have not seen. There are really majini in my home. Mm. So like that then he went. Mm. The following day he came back he was sober he could not even remember what he was saying and mm. whatever mm. to me i didn't take it anything i did pump mm. this him leave a drunk mm. but then you see now we finished the holiday and i came to nairobi mm. already my i mean the investigations were on the way mm. they were ongoing mm. so now see now it is here the results have come they have confirmed so when my mother in law heard that it is cancer Mm. She believed and she has she died knowing that it is that lady who bewitched him. Mm. I mean it, it is not it, I, I didn't 
I didn't take it in. Mm -hmm. And I think, let's say, if I was not a medic, mm -hmm. maybe that would really affect me, yeah. and we would be enemies with that mama. Yeah, most yeah. likely you would have gone for traditional medicine. Yes, I would have gone for traditional medicine. And again, people are different. During this time of my illness, I have had people come and tell me this one is, uh, it, uh, I know, I know somebody who was having this and they said it is cancer, but it was not cancer. We went for traditional medicine and it is now better. So mm. come, we go for traditional medicine. I personally don't believe in traditional medicine, mm. so I, I don't go. Mm. I have had people come and tell me, uh, they take me to somebody for prayers. Mm. I say, yes, I want to go for prayers. Yeah, I'm ready to go. Where are we going? Somebody tells me, oh, okay, we are going to Mile Saba. You know where Mile Saba is here in Nairobi? Mm. Dondora, down, down, down. Yani, it is a, a slum. Mm. Uh, somebody else came and told me, we go to Kawangware. Mm. Also, Kawangware, where he's talking of is a slum. Then I asked them, why is it that these people who are praying are just in slums? Mm. Hmm? Why can't they also pray for themselves so that they come out of those slums? Mm. So I tell them, me, I, I believe in prayer and I believe in uh, uh, spiritual healing. Mm. But I don't believe in going such a... So, ule wana taka kuniombe, niombe tu wapu. Omba tu nitapona. And for true, God has been my rock. Mm. Yeah, I, mm. me, I trust in God and I believe that I am... I've reached where I've reached because of God. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm one person, yes, I'm a medical person, but I believe that doctors treat, yeah. but the healer is God. It's God so it is doctor, it is God using these doctors through those drugs, and is the one who will heal you. You use them and you heal. Yes. So I'm, I'm well, so far, so now, my problem is just the finances. Yeah. How I'm going to be raising this uh, 60-something thousand, 64,000 mm. every month. Mm. It's an issue to me, mm. but uh, so far, I am under treatment. Yeah, so talking of finances, I know there may be people who may watch this and they want to support you, or what would be your, your appeal to them? Anybody who watches this and maybe wants to support or something like that? My appeal is that I want to be treated. I want to continue using my drugs and trust in God that if I get, be, I, I continue taking the drugs, I will be better. Therefore, I appeal for any, to anybody who feels like can support me in any way with whatever you have, it's welcome so that I can continue, so that I don't stop the, my drugs. Mm. I use them until when doctor feels that this is the time that you can stop. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just an appeal. Any willing person, as the, the Lord touches your heart, Mm. Whatever you have, you make a mm. yeah. I think when I'll be making the video, I'll uh, put uh, a timeline down there. I indicate Alice Onyino Medical Fund, and then I put there your number, okay. so that if anybody wants to support, then they can send to that number. Sure, I would be very grateful. And I trust that the Lord will talk to people, so I will touch them and they will assist me, because God has done it. Mm. I have been assisted in many ways. I could not raise that money on my own. Mm. But people have assisted me. And so mm. I still appeal. Mm. Mm. I still want to live. Yeah. Mm. Mama Alice Onyino has a special message for everyone. Those who have been tested and those who have not been tested. And uh, talking of, uh, uh, you know, coming out, because there are many people whom who will be sick, but they try to hide themselves, what would be your message to anybody who is unwell? I'll, I'll talk to those people, I'll start with the people who are not sick, the people who are well. The cancer is a disease that does not give pain. Mm. It's a silent killer, if I may say. It's not, it's, not, it's not a death sentence, but it's a silent killer. What do I mean by silent? Because it is in your body, slowly, you don't know. By the time you start getting the signs, mm. it is advanced. Mm. So the best thing, these days, we have medical checkups. Go for your medical well, well clinic, mm. go to the hospital when you are well, mm. and have yourself checked. Mm. Yeah. And once you are checked and you are told, we suspect this, please abide with the doctors. Uh, the doctor's plan mm -hmm. and do the way the doctors wants you to do. 
so that we can be able to do away with the cancer. Otherwise, when we wait until we get the, the signs, maybe you are getting the pain or you are bleeding, depending if it is cancer of which place, or you are not able to swallow, then it means it has, it has, it has lived advanced. Mm -hmm. So it's good that you, you start early, mm -hmm. check yourself. At least these days there are medical places you just go and you are checked, well clinic, mm -hmm. and they check you and do all the tests they want to do. It is cheaper than waiting for treatment. Mm -hmm. And for those that are already diagnosed, if the doctor diagnoses, makes a diagnosis that you have cancer of this place, they will talk to you and tell you how they are going to manage it. Please abide with their plan. But the moment you get the diagnosis, please talk to your soul, accept. Remember, it is just a condition, it is a sickness that anybody can get the way we get malaria. Mm -hmm. So don't start thinking of, you've been bewitched, so and so does not like me because maybe I have this or maybe I do this. No, accept. The first treatment or the first doctor for your disease is you yourself. Mm. You accept. Once you accept and then you take the treatment the way you are told, mm. we will leave. Mm. Yes, we will leave. So acceptance is very important. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think one thing that uh, I appreciate you about is anybody talking to you on phone may not know that you are, um, you are unwell because you know you are always full of life. What is it that gives you this energy, you know, to keep on and even talk to other people who are unwell? I think it's God. Mm. Because the truth is, sometimes I don't even believe myself. I can be in very bad pains. Mm. But when you call me, if I talk to you, I will not have that voice of, eh, I'm dying, you know. Mm -mm. It just comes. So I think it is God who gives me that strength mm -hmm. because he wants me to, to be a living example. Mm -hmm. And I think from the time I was diagnosed with the cancer and I've undergone treatment, I have counseled many and I've helped many. Mm -hmm. Many have come to me. Mm -hmm. They have brought their patients because when the patients are down, down, then they bring them to see a living example. That is what they always say. To me, mlete ili wakuone. Waone ya kwamba unaweza kuishi hata kama wewe uko na cancer. Mm. So God has given me that voice. It mm. doesn't go. Yeah, I, mean, I just talk the way the normal way. Mm. Yeah. I can be rolling, rolling with the pain, pain, but when I pick my phone, even if I try that I don't want to talk, but sauti itatoka tu ile yenyewe. So ni Mungu, ni God. Mm. Mm. And maybe on that how has your condition affected your relationship with other people, maybe family members, friends? How has it affected your relationship with them? Well, I keep on talking of God. I think my condition has strengthened my relationship with my relatives and friends. Mm. Yes, because they, 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 they really look up to me and they want to support me and they want to know how I'm doing. So we have become even closer than before. Mm. Yes. Mm. It has not it has affected me positively, not negatively. Sijapata yule mtu ambaye uko negative na mimi. And if there is any, then it has kept it to herself and kept it away. Despite her failing health and the pain that comes with the disease, Mama Alice has stood firm as a strong cancer warrior. She encourages other cancer patients not to lose hope. Okay. Yeah. And then there are those people who say that um, me, if I'm diagnosed with cancer, I will not go for chemotherapy or radio, radio, radiotherapy uh, because they believe that uh, when you go for those uh, procedures, they kill all the cells in the body. Yes, people believe that, but it just needs a... Uh, I would say just understand somebody to talk to. You know, I didn't talk of support group. When mm -hmm. I was diagnosed with the cancer, I joined a support group. And in that support group, we talk and get different uh, ideas, experiences, and whatever. Mm -hmm. When you are on chemotherapy, mm -hmm. it is true it kills the cells. What does it do? Chemo, chemo is a drug that kills the cancer cells. Mm -hmm. Cancer cells, it's believed that they they, they multiply very fast. Mm -hmm. So any, any cell in your body that multiply very fast, 
mm. will be killed. Mm. It is true. Mm. That is why you will see patients with cancer cells, their hair, the mm. hair would drop mm. because the hair, the cells that deal with the hair, mm. they are those that multiply very fast. Mm. The color of the skin would change mm. because the skin, so you know, with our skin, what is here, mm. after seven days it is not, it goes on. Mm. So it, uh, then it will also, your nails, mm. your nails would turn black, die off and come out mm. because those are cells also that develop very fast. Mm. But they don't kill those cells to kill and kill because these are cells that keep on renewing themselves. Mm. So at a village, the cells are These cells are not talking about the cells. So I would just advise them that uh, go for treatment. Mm. Yes, your hair will fall off. Yes, your nails will fall off. But it will not kill you that the, the cells are dead, so you will die. Mm. Those are cells that regenerate, they, they grow. Mm. Mm. You know, last time we were together, I had somebody saying that your hair is looking very nice because of, you know, the color. Is it gray or white? Is it because of the, the treatment or is it because of uh, age? I have left my hair this way. I don't know whether it is because of age, but when I started chemo this time, mm. the, other, the first time, yes, it happened, and even this time, my hair fell off, all of it. But uh, that time, I had black hair. Okay. Na grey moja moja one 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 nivo. Mm. So when my hair fell off, I remained clean as if I've shaved Jordan. Mm. Now after I finished the chemo, in fact what is on my head is just two months old. Okay. It started growing and when it grew it came out just mm. I don't know whether I call it white. Mm. So I'm proud of it because it looks nice mm. and I, I pray that it grows just that I don't want anything black there. Mm. And uh, it also talk of my age because on what, June 24th this year, mm. I turned 70. 70? Yeah, 90. so I'm 70 years old. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. you don't look 70. I am. <laughs> so it is also age, mm. but so far natural turning of uh, age mm. had not come yet. Okay. Uh, I was still having my black hair plus. And now, you know, being a lady mm. or being a mother, having black and white it used to look funny. Mm. So sometimes you're forced to die. Mm. Yeah. But okay. now it is completely white. Mm. And I hear it is very marketable. So if it grows big, maybe it will also help me to get money for treatment. You'll I shave, shave and sell to the ladies. <laughs> and then I get money mm. to support my treatment. Yeah. If that is true. I'm yeah. told by the young ladies, oh, it's nice. I wish I could. So I don't know whether mm. it is true. It is marketable. Mm. But that's what I've had. Mm. Mm. But talking of age, mm. uh, you know, when people work, they hope to retire, you know, have some savings and um, use their savings maybe to do one, two, three. Uh, for you, is it the same case? Uh, you know, somebody said cancer is a monster. Mm. When you think of that, then you call it a monster. Mm. I told you that I got sick. I was discovered in 2010 and I started treatment in 2011 and I retired in 2014. Mm. So the lump sum that I was given, which could be supporting me now in life and uh, maybe doing a few things here, mm. all got finished with the treatment. Mm. So I have totally nothing. There's nothing that I have a saving. Mm. Yes, I, I, I retired and I was given a lump sum and that's the time I'm sick. So you just take that money and buy drugs, take that money and do this test, take that money like that mm. until the, the bank went empty. Uh, talking of relatives, what would you tell uh, like your relatives who have been supporting you through this journey? God, I have no words for my relatives because these people have walked with me the journey from day one. Once I was diagnosed, they have really, they've made sure that I have medicine. Mama, if it is chemo, I have to go through it. So I am very grateful. It is just in my prayer that God may bless you and the desires of your hearts, God may just fulfill. Because what you are doing for me, I know you don't have fun enough. You know now, my own sisters and brothers, 
they've all retired. Mm -hmm. So they're retired people. They are supporting me, maybe from their retirement kit, or just from their hard working, they go looking, they, from the shamba, sell what they have, and make sure that I'm treated. And then I have my, they're called nephews and nieces. Yeah. And nieces. Yeah, nieces. Oh God, I am grateful. These people have taken that burden, that they make sure every time, in fact, like this time, sometimes I sit and wonder what am I going to do, and then a few days ago, my nephew passed on, and we went for burial. And after burial, we sat together that we are talking and having breakfast together and uh, doing a postmortem on how we have, the burial has gone on. Then I was just uh, too moved with the, the family, the, the nuclear family that had lost a brother, giving me money for my treatment for two good months. So now, at least I have money for treatment. The Iotis, I just want to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, and God bless you. Thank you. Asante, I can see you are in a lot of pain, but as we conclude, I wanted us to talk about, um, you know, the mess in the health sector, the NHIF, the SHIF, and the SHA. Uh, 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 because one, one would expect that at this moment those are the kind of schemes that should come in to support patients. <coughs> it's a, it, it, I don't know what to say about them because it is, it is really sad. If I talk on my side personally, I didn't have personal insurance. I used, to, I lived with my group insurance, Yakazi. Mm -hmm. So the moment I retired, then now I relied on NHIF, which was doing well. At least, the, if I was paying the drugs for treatment, this is uh, like now chemotherapy, I was paying 60,000, they were giving me 25. You see, they have relieved, at least they have relieved that burden. Mm -hmm. But now from this month, I went, took my drugs. The last time they, pay, they, they paid for my drug was in September. Mm. So when I went, applied for my drug, up to now there's totally nothing that has come up. Mm -hmm. They tell me uh, nothing I have to, to, to do, uh, to register. Kwa shif, ni shif ama ni sha, I don't know what it is, how to call it. Mm -hmm. But I've registered and we have applied and there's totally nothing. So it means we are uh, we are left on our own. Mm -hmm. We are just left on our own. You have to see what to do. Otherwise, they are not paying. I don't know whether it is a government scheme or whatever it is. I don't know what is happening. But patients, we are suffering. Mm -hmm. We are really suffering. We had people are dying because you can't raise that much money from where. Mm -hmm. But you see, when they give you a little bit of it. And then you also struggle to get, and somebody else give you something you put together, you get your treatment. Mm -hmm. But these people have just pulled off. At yet we are paying. Mm -hmm. We are giving our contribution monthly. Mm -hmm. So we don't know what is going on so far. Mm -hmm. But NHIF has been active and paid for us until September. Mm -hmm. Yes, without a problem. The transition from the National Hospital Insurance Fund to the Social Health Insurance Fund and the Social Health Authority has created a lot of pain and misery for cancer patients. Behind me is the Ministry of Health Headquarters. Mama Alice has a special message for the officials at the Ministry of Health. Please, government, look at the health sector. People are suffering. Mm. So even if you are changing from NHIF to Sha or she, then please make it, make it uh, viable and make it something practical that is working so that we can be able to be helped. You know, the big people in government don't care because them, one, they have insurance, big insurance are being paid by the government, taxpayers' money. Mm. So even us, the small people should also be, be, be cared for. Mm. Otherwise, the truth is, in Kenya at the moment, we are dying of diseases because there's no insurance. Mm -hmm. And yet these people who are dying, we people who are dying, we are struggling very much to make sure that we have paid the, what we are supposed to pay to NHIF. Finally, 
I want us to talk about uh, your family because uh, all the time we come here, I always find somebody here. Any of your sons is always here. What is your message to your children? My children, I just want to say thank you to them because they've really been there for me. Mm -hmm. I know it has really, my illness affected them so much, but uh, they have recovered, they have accepted the condition, but they are truly nursing me very well. I have no problem. My, where I am now is my son's place. He is married, the child, and the wife is very sweet. It's still nursing me so well. I don't complain. When she goes to work, she makes sure that she's left behind. She has a house help who is very good, mm -hmm. who takes care of me. Mm -hmm. So I just want to say thank you. My younger son has no job yet, but he's always around mm -hmm. taking care of me. Mm -hmm. And when I want to go to the hospital, when I want anything, they are there running around doing it. I just want to tell them thank you. Mm -hmm. And it's my prayer that God may just bless them mm -hmm. and open their ways. Yeah, and by the way, one way of supporting auntie is uh, if you can get a job opportunity for her son, he's called Nixon, it will really help her because Nixon will also be able to support the mother financially. So, auntie, I want to thank you so much. What you need to know is that um, all of us are very proud of you. When we talk to you on phone, we feel the energy. When we come here, we sit with you. We are always very proud of you. Whatever God gives us to support you, we will always support you. Okay. And, and because I believe that uh, next time we'll come to sit here, I have a strong belief that you'll be healed and you'll give a different testimony on how, you know, the healing process. So I really appreciate you. Thank you so, so much. Mm. I am grateful. The energy that I have is from you people. Mm. Yes, and I still want to live and Kula Ugali Namrenda. Mm. Yes. Mm. And I'm also proud of you. Because when I see you, I just feel happy. Mm. Mm. I'm in safe hands. Mm. Asante, Asante. Thank you so, so much. God bless you. Asante. Thank you. Mm.